<laughs> I feel like this man, this man just lost in the fire making. So we're going to give him crack at, at first question. And Bennett's got a question. So, so my man, go ahead. Definitely. See, I'm going to unmute you. There you go. Okay, cool. Um, so first of all, I don't know what everybody ate for breakfast today, but all of you can type so fast. It is beyond me, but well done. Um, PG, the question that I had was around kind of like both times you went on the show. If there was one thing that you could tell somebody who's trying to get on the show, what to expect when they get there, that you didn't think of the first, either the first time or even the second time around. Like, what's one thing about your experience that was totally different than you anticipated? Mute Brady. Uh, oh, my yes. gosh. That's something. Okay, well, I feel like there's a couple of different ways to go with that. But what stood out to me about your question was what was what I didn't, what was different than what I expected. And this sounds like a stupid thing to say because it seems obvious. But um, I guess I wasn't prepared for how much the hunger affected me. Mm -hmm. even though you you watch it you you know people complain about the food you know you know that that's a big part of survivor is not having the food it's not like an unexpected thing but having never actually experienced that like that was my biggest takeaway but that was mostly true for my first season and not for my second I guess in China we went four days without eating anything for the first yeah. like yeah I don't did you guys have like long periods of not eating did you lose that comp? We, we didn't eat the first three days. First four days. Why, yeah, the days. first four days. And that's why we lost that competition so badly. Did you, did you still lose that competition after? Oh, that? we lost everything. Yeah. Yeah. I've okay. not won like a thing. I've, I've probably won like one um, group, <laughs> group immunity in my right. entire survivor community or something yeah. like that. That rice makes a difference. You would think it doesn't, but like Vokai ate all four of those days because Janet made fire and we were just sluggish. We had Erin on the, on the fire. So obviously we just starved. Um, so I will also give you guys a little bit of advice that, um, actually this was advice that I got from Yul Kwan before I went on my first season, cause my sister, like he spoke at her university and so she, and this happened, she met him right before I went on the show. Oh, and wow. so she went up and told him, she was like, Hey, my sister's about to leave to go play survivor. She's like, can I put you guys in touch? So we had that. a couple phone conversations before I went out. And so this is one of the things that Yul told me was, um, he goes, you guys will get out there and you are going to have um, pregame. He's like, you don't start right away. You know, you go there, you arrive at this campsite and, and you're there for like maybe anywhere from five days a week, whatever. And like, I didn't know any of this, right? Going into it. So he's like, you don't, you're not allowed to talk to each other. He's like, but you still see each other during meals, whatever. He goes, the game starts there. So he's like, whatever you do, what you're doing around these people, he's like, you have to be careful because that is the first impression people will get of you. They already start forming impressions. He's like, you need to start taking notes, um, keeping track of who's who and what you kind, who you think you can work with and trust. So he's like, you got to start doing all of that at pregame at Ponderosa and be very aware of like how you're coming off to them as well. And I'll tell you how this kind of backfired <laughs> because at the time, um, all I brought with me was like all these like trashy romance novels and like fantasy books. And I was so afraid of everyone thinking like that I was going to be an airhead or getting voted out first that I was like, I don't want to show that. So I just started, I don't know, doing like Sudoku puzzles mm -hmm. at the pregame. And all I did was do these stupid, so I figured, oh, that's pretty generic. No one's going to read too much from that. No. And then when we merged, Amanda told me, she was like, we all noticed you doing these Sudokus and we thought you were some kind of puzzle genius. And she's like, we wanted to vote you off first after the merge because we were like afraid that you were going to be so good at the challenges because of that. So now yeah. it, now that shit backfired. And that's also where the whole Sudoku joke came out of because of like some shit I was doing in pregame. <laughs> mm, good yeah. stuff, good stuff. Justin, you're up next. I got your hand raised. You're unmuted. Go ahead. Oh. Go ahead I remembered I recently watched a part of Survivor China and I was laughing so much when I heard um, you stated Jeff when he asked you if you did puzzles and then you said, I do Sudoku and they started commenting that I think at Tribal Council. <laughs> Super <laughs> fan. He's here for it. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Justin, did you, did you have a question? Or just, just wanted to bring that up? 
No, I just wanted to bring that up mostly. All right. I All love right, it. Buddy. I All love right, that. Chucky, you're up next. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, so first off, congrats, Felipe um, and uh, Jason. I felt like Laurel, and you guys were like Wendell and Dominic, and I was just there. Damn, um, damn. <laughs> Got to prepare myself for tomorrow. Um, I guess this is for all of, you, uh, all of you guys. What's the atmosphere like? Like, are we watching the episode? Like, do you know, like, do you kind of have, like, a feel for, like, who the winner is and – like, who everyone voted for, or is that, like, part of the contract you signed and you can't, like, tell anyone anything? Like, right. can you tell your parents that, like, you made it to the merge right now? Hmm. Good question. Go ahead. Um, I didn't say shit to anybody. When, <laughs> you know, but I, I also played the first time before we even really had social media. Like, I had, like, a MySpace. Like, mm -hmm. that's how long ago it was. So there was a lot I think less of putting things out there or whatever, but, and I didn't even tell my family, but mostly because I guess I knew I made it as, to a certain place. So I just thought it was fun to, yeah. you know, it's, it's more fun. I think it's more fun to leave everyone in suspense. Yeah. Aaron? Yeah. I, I didn't tell anybody much, but my wife did. Um, she, she kind of spilled the beans that I didn't make the family visit. So she had her bags packed, was getting ready to go. And then they had the double tribal council where Missy and I got bounced. And then they called her up, like, she was supposed to get on the, on the flight two hours later. And they were like, nah, stay, he just, he, just, he just got voted out. So obviously, like, she told all of our close friends. But besides from that, pretty, we kept it pretty tight. We kept it pretty tight. That's yeah. brutal. Yeah, same. And like, and like, from a standpoint of like, yeah, I mean, I had a pretty good idea that Tommy won. I mean, I knew who I voted for. I didn't tell anybody who I voted for. But I, I mean, you could sense that I was politicking for Dean the way that I handled my approach at tribal council so i knew tommy probably won and i knew where, where my vote went i just i didn't tell anybody did you know that tommy was gonna win even in game no uh no no <laughs> uh, no <laughs> no 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 the way that it shook out final three uh, you know yes but going into final five i didn't think tommy stood a chance that was really yeah. i felt like i knew todd i, I knew todd was gonna win the minute i met him Really? I was like, I was like, if y'all don't vote this guy out, he's winning this game. He gives off that energy though. His first episode was great. I thought that first episode mm -hmm. on China. Yeah. Like I was, I, I don't, I don't know why it was this weird like thing. Like I just knew I was like, if y'all let him get to the end, he's winning and no one else, no one believed me. <laughs> yeah. And then same for me, my best friend was supposed to fly out. And so my, uh, none of my family actually found out, but her family knew that I didn't make it because they also watched Survivor. And I just told my family that I was gone for a 5K for Ironman in Hawaii. Um, I told them I was gone for a couple of months, so they never really even thought to ask. And then when the episodes came out, I figured the first couple of episodes would be me talking shit and like appearing to be very dominant and probably looking like a winner. So I didn't want to spoil it for them. So yeah, my mom called me at the end of every episode. Anytime it looked like I was in trouble, she would call me freaking out. So I wanted them to have fun with the, with the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah I, part, I knew part. like... Frosty told me that his mom flew from Chicago to LA and they turned her around in LA and sent her back to Chicago. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's the brut that's the most brutal vote out because then you also have to watch the person who dies right after you. You have to watch their loved one come to Ponderosa. So like me and Aaron got out together. So both of our people should have been there if we would have lasted a, literally a couple of more hours right oh and so you could have seen them at the ponderosa so we like yeah. i would have so i would brother. prefer yeah i would prefer to see my loved one at ponderosa because you get way more time with them it's not produced there's no cameras yeah. around really right so he's yeah. drinking yeah. beers with us he's eating with us playing ping pong chilling yeah. telling us all about all the the real world news like who won the basketball tournament and march madness and stuff yeah yeah good who question. Else, uh, question we got bo i'm coming at you brother Felipe, i got you next um, so before you guys were talking about like running into people at the airport and the day after the live reunion show, I ran into Tommy at the bathroom at LAX. <laughs> <laughs> and um, also PG was Courtney like really on like not nice to you. Like, did it like seem that way to you or was it just like the way it was edited? No, Courtney was actually like the nicest person to me. Hmm. Courtney is one of those people that um, she's really snarky and funny, but she's also really a sweetheart. Like she is so, if you guys ever meet her, she is so nice, so personable. Like, you know, she's also, she's even kind of like a little motherly, 
she's just like um, this like little motherly sweet person, but just with a really sharp, funny tongue. So it's like her action, you know, like she'll say these funny things, but they, it's not like she really means it. I mean, she does, but then she's just like a nice person overall though. So you would know? you say like her edit highlighted that intense part of her personality and it didn't really showcase her softer side? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I don't think her edit even made her seem, I mean, she said some kind of like bitchy things, but it, it's not like they were, I don't think the things she says are really mean spirited. They're, you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, or Just I don't, the way that she says it, like, right? Like the body language and the, the tone that she, she uses. She like busts people's balls. You yes. know what I mean? It's like she one of those things. Her. It's like she kind of busting your, she's kind of busting your balls, but like it's, it's for me it always seemed like good fun and like you'll notice like she she's good at kind of taking care of people around her i don't know i, I never I, I never thought of her as like a bad person good stuff yeah. Yeah. felipe go ahead bro hey guys um so i have a two-part question uh the first one is who would you run the amazing race with and pg would you run it with abby if they asked you <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and then i pay, I pay for that i pay good money <laughs> Oh, and then God. the second part is, how do you think China would be perceived today? Um, like if it aired in a modern time, like the same way? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, two totally different questions. Um, I would, of course, I would do Amazing Race. I'd probably do it with, I don't, I don't know, uh, probably my best friend, Jason. He's, he's, he's really funny and we get along really well. We solve puzzles together really well. And um, like, like I, I, I would like to do it with him. It'd probably be less. We don't fight at all. I'm sure that wouldn't be interesting <laughs> to people. Um, I don't know if I would. Would I do it with Abby? <laughs> if you got a big stipend, you got a big stipend. They're like, this is quality TV. We'll give you 50K up front. I mean, I would, but like, I don't think we would, we'd be like the first ones out. <laughs> like, like, if I got a big stipend, yeah, I would. Um, it's also a different. I don't know what she would be like on Amazing Race. Like she's the worst person to play Survivor with. Um, <laughs> I beg to differ. I beg to differ. I've got, I've got somebody who 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 might who might beat her. Who? Who do you Nora? think? Nora? Oh. <laughs> okay, I got it. Go ahead. <laughs> wow. Oh, y'all, y'all have not played with her because let me tell you that after I played with her. A bunch of other people who have also played with her all messaged me afterwards and they were like, girl, we had, they were like, Damn. like we understand. Y'all got an Abby oh. group chat. That's wild. Yes, I'm going to tell, tell you that she would give her a run for her money. <laughs> um, but that's oh. not to say like outside of the game, it's funny because my relationship with Abby is kind of this weird love hate thing where I guess. I don't know how to describe it, but maybe it's like your sister where like her and I actually kind of get along, but we also fight. But then it's not like a big, I don't know, like we bitch at, e at each other a lot, right? Yeah. But we're production, yeah, production makes everything look looks worse than it is, for sure. Oh, no, we didn't have that on the game. Like, we were at each other's throats in the game. Oh, Afterwards, okay. <laughs> but then production had it, like, they toned it down, if anything. <laughs> Damn, that's wild. Wow. But wow. no, 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 we're, we're, we're fine now. Um, like, I, I do, I, I, I do, and I will say... I love Abby and I love having Abby in the survivor community. And every mm -hmm. time I see her, like I go to like a live events with her or I hear her on a podcast, I'm reminded of why she's such a good character. Definitely. Like, yeah. Superstar. Like, but like she, she says is wild and, and it's just, and it's entertaining. Like, so, uh, you her, know, her Instagram takeover where they were twerking oh in my the God. house. I was it's, just like, CBS is a family show. I didn't even know we could do that. I didn't, <laughs> I was shook. Um, um and for, I think the last part of the question too was how do you think Survivor China would be perceived in modern day Survivor? Yeah. You know, that is a really good question. I don't know. I feel like, look, I think obviously it's a pretty solid season, but I, I think that it's, I think modern viewers may be a little bit bored with how simple the gameplay was. If my uh, question was also like, how would Todd be perceived as a winner? Would the show celebrate him more based on his game or would they like, yeah, do you feel like Todd gets no shine, kind of? Like, how do you feel? I'm sorry to take your question, but, like, why wasn't he on 40, you know? Like, I thought he was a good winner. I thought he was a big character. Did people he not was, perceive him? I, I think there was too much risk with his um, 
past alcoholism issues. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, I, I mean, as much as I think that he's fine and he could have handled it, for CBS, it's too much of a liability. Right. What if... After 39, they're not taking any more risks. Yeah, so. who knows? Like, I don't think it's like, oh, he would relapse, but you never know how someone's going to react coming out of something. And, I, you know, it, it's just too much of a risk for them. So I understand. I, I think it's a shame. I would have really liked to have seen him, and I think he would have been fine, but I get why. Yeah. And then for so, the for me and Aaron, I mean, I would say Aaron. I don't know if he's do, still say me, but Amazing Grace. 100%, 100%. Oh, see, there's love. The Amazing yeah. Grace, the challenge, anything, I have to go with Aaron or I'm not going. Oh, I love that. Yeah, this is my guy. This is my guy. Max. Max. Connor, you're up, brother. So I just have a question for all of you. How do you prepare to not die on the show? Because I weigh like nothing. So like not having enough calcium, like all that crap of like actually surviving. How do you deal with that? Because I'm like, I would die. Good question, bro. Go ahead. Go ahead, PG. Um, so I had done similar things when I was probably in my early twenties. I'd spent like a couple of weeks living on like a small island off the coast of Malaysia. Um, I stayed in a hut with no electricity or running water. There was just a hammock and I just went diving every day. And that was some shit I did for fun. Uh, so granted there's, there's food I'm doing, you know what I mean? But it's like, once you've kind of done, you put, once you've put yourself out of your comfort zone in a certain way, you know, um, that makes you, that makes all of these things always easier. So my recommendation always to people that want to get on is like, it's not enough to be a super fan. You, you got to have these life experiences that mm -hmm. prepare you for it. That's, you know, and it was still a shock and I'd done shit like that and it was still shocking to me. So I couldn't imagine what it'd be like for someone who never even experienced that kind of stuff. Definitely. I felt, well, you guys? I felt like I was very outdoorsy and adventurous. I lived in Denver for college. Um, and so I did a lot of like wrestling alligators and stuff like in my video, try to try to stand out for the video. But in the game, I don't think you can, I don't think you can prepare for starving. Like in my audition tape, I said that I was in the military. I did basic training and we have this, I forget what it's called, but we have a program where they drop us off in the woods for a week and we just starve. There's no food at all. And you starve just for the whole, those, that whole time. If you try to leave, you get, you get kicked out. If you find food and dig for it, like I found some onions and I was digging for these onions because I was fucking starving, you'll get kicked out. Um, oh, you're not even like, allowed to try to feed yourself that's weird yeah no like the purpose for, is for you like the purpose was like if you were to be captured you're in the military you're deployed somewhere and you were captured and you had to think clearly for a week but you were also in enemy territory could you survive right like could you like provide for yourself and we had like little tablets to put in our water so that was like my biggest like oh i did this i can play survivor fuck no <laughs> starving starving is just starving and we did it for a month so i I don't think there's anywhere to prepare for that. I'm already very, very skinny. And by like day 23, 24, I could see my rib cage. I could see my heart. Um, people couldn't sleep on me anymore at night because my spine was exposed. So you don't prepare for it. You just suffer. Like you straight up just suffer and you continue to play. And then when you get voted out, get voted out, then you go eat. The That's camera it. really does add 10 pounds. Because I'm like, we don't look like skeletons, but we were. But like, we were, yeah. 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 yeah I mean, I uh, just to echo that. You know, obviously with what I do, like I understand, you know, the body metabolism, you know, muscle, fat, you know, going on from a prep standpoint, I try to take off some muscle mass and I try to put on some body fat just mm. because I wanted my body to eat away at the fat that I, that I accumulated. Um, but the, it, it, that only lasts, you know, 10 days. And then from day 10 to day 27, it's literally, you're, you're just fumes. starving. You're just, you're just, yeah, you're starving. You're on fumes. You don't want to you don't want to look for idols. You don't want to go fishing. You don't want to walk. You just literally want to sit at camp because you're just exhausted. Like it, you are starving, you know, yeah. a cup of rice like this twice a day when I'm used to 4,000 calories, it's nothing. Like it's yeah. just, your body is just withering away. Um, the biggest thing that you cannot prepare for is the cold. It is yeah. freezing. And, and when I say cold, cold, with the wind chill and being wet, probably 60 degrees, 50 degrees is what it is, what it feels like out there. Oh God. Uh, that's like, yeah. I got sick for three weeks once after being in like 60 degree weather. And I'm like, I do not want to do survivor. I would oh, die. Yeah. Being in the country. rain, being in the rain is miserable. Like and you wouldn't All think it's, would, yeah. it, it yeah. doesn't seem that bad because you're like, everyone's I'm sure has been 
stuck in the rain outdoors, but it's a different thing when you're like, fuck, this sucks. I'm soaking wet, but I'll be home in an hour at the most, two hours, and I can, you know, go home and get dry. But if it's just constant and you know that, tomorrow, you know, there's no really getting dry, like your clothes mm-hmm. are just constantly wet. It's on just you. mental torture. Like we, t- we had a day where all of us took turns breaking down. Nora <laughs> broke down. I broke down. Elizabeth broke down. And you would just see people like, we would all be sitting together in the shelter. Nora would start crying and we'd like run over to Nora and hold her and hug her. And then I would start crying, they would run over and hug me. And then Elizabeth would go and we just rotate it like that on the rainy days. It was literal torture. It was so bad. Yeah. yeah. Brady, what's up, brother? Um, so my question, this can honestly go to all of you. Who is one person that you think should not have been on second chances and who would you replace them with? Dang, he wants the tea. Go ahead. Dang. Wow. Straight wow. up. Um Oh my, you know, I, so did I tell you, like, I'm like, and I feel like I talked about this right before. I didn't even watch the rest of the season after I got voted off because I, I had <laughs> such, every time I saw, I tried. And whenever I'd see Abby Marie on the screen, I got such intense PTSD that like, I, I'd get so angry. Do it. I just couldn't even like, I just was like, I'm like, I'm not watching any more of this. That was so Chelsea was, for us. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. Red flag. White flag. White flag. White flag. Well, you know, I'm I'm glad I'm glad my feud is already out in the open, so I can talk about this. Uh, (laughs) Um, God, I don't. I mean, it's 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 hard to say. Like, I don't know who should or shouldn't have been. Like, I'm not gonna really. I I guess I have a hard time answering this because I I haven't even watched it. So. We're too biased. I think this question is too biased for us because you guys know players who they are with the edit, right? But we know players as who they who they are and what actually happened. So I think it's too it's too hard. It's too hard. Great question. I'm gonna, though. I'm gonna plead the fifth, and I'm gonna say they all deserve to be on the show. Yeah, anybody who makes it and wins deserves to do that. Is my answer. That's uh, good that's question. My, that's my answer, Brady. I'm sorry, bro. Uh, Miguel, I got you. Go ahead. He's like, I wanted the tea. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, PG, I wanted to ask you, like, I know you had a rough time in China, but had you had everything went, gone your way, who would be your ideal final three? Oh, my ideal final three? I wanted to go with Courtney and Denise. Courtney Do you think we had no chance? If I went to the end with Courtney and Denise, I think I would have won 1,000%. Like, oh. But Courtney had more votes than Amanda. So oh. she did. Uh, what, would have, what would have happened had Amanda and Corny been in the final two, for example? Would Amanda and won? Amanda. Amanda would have won. I think Amanda would have won if it was because basically. So this was the thing was that Amanda and Todd played such a similar game, um, but he owned his game whereas she didn't. So the thing is. If you, so, so you either voted for gameplay or you were bitter and you voted against people that voted against yeah. you, right? So the right. two votes that Courtney got were the people were from like bitter jurors, which I think basically is like James and Denise voted for. Oh yeah, because James didn't care anymore. Yeah, and yeah. so you, well, he felt like betrayed by Amanda and Todd. Right. So right. the thing is, Amanda and Todd, they played almost exactly the same game. So if you had to choose between the two of them, and you're basically, so if you're going to vote for either one of them, it means you're voting for gameplay. And then Todd's the one who owned his game more. So you're going to end up voting for Todd over Amanda. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's why like you have to get rid of anyone who played too similar to you. Mm-hmm. Who could claim your moves. Exactly. Or who can claim your moves and speak better than you. Yeah. So if yeah. Todd's gone, Amanda's getting all of Todd's votes. Exactly. Like, in fact, like I went back to Ponderosa and I was like, um, I was rooting hard for Amanda. I went around telling like, everyone to vote for Amanda. Yeah, campaigning. <laughs> and, and I was, yeah, I was campaigning for her at Ponderosa, but ultimately her <laughs> final tribal was so bad that I went from campaigning for Amanda at Ponderosa to at the final tribal, I was like, Todd or Courtney? Because Courtney had a really good, like, Same. final yeah. That happened yeah. for me too. You can make yeah. or break it. Nora, like, Nora lost it at, at final tribal. Yeah, my vote was for awesome. Nora. Really? But then we got this final tribal. I mean, granted, I feel like it's such a long answer, but Nora wasn't really given a chance to speak. Like the two guys kind of kind of bullied her and she gave into it. And Nora had a full breakdown and she couldn't even she 
they weren't allowing her to speak, but also when she did get the floor, like when the jury was like, shut the fuck up, let Nora speak, she said nothing of content. I was like, Nora, th- I will never forget this. It's so wild. I was like, Nora, how did you use Elizabeth and I strategically in your gameplay? You can, you can make, some, you can make like, fuck shit up. I'm just like, Nora, tell us everything about how you killed a really good player and yeah. an Olympic athlete. Tell us all you about it. You want to hear her say, like, I used you guys and played you. That means I'm better than you. That's why right. you should vote for me. I That's manipulated cool. you and I used yeah. you as a meat shield. Nora said, oh, my God, we're both vegans and I love you. Yeah, it was. I, it was just you hard. Lose, you don't want to lose. You want to lose to a better person. Yeah, it was just so hard to. I was like, I was there. I was, Jeff was saying, like, Nora, she's helping you. And I, I think Nora was just so out of it. She was just in a deer in headlights for a minute. And that's Thomas what I said to well. Amanda. I was like, stop. I was like, tell me, like, tell me what you did. Like, stop yeah. apologizing for everything. Like, like, own it. If you cut people's throats, then tell me about the bloodshed. Like, you, you made the seats. Like, none of us made it. We want to hear about how you took us out, you know? Because that's a compliment to us. Like, tell me how you killed me. I, I think I'm a good player. Tell me how you killed me. Well, because it's like with any game, you don't know really what everyone's true motivations or plot line is. But Final Tribal is when you're supposed to be like, the big reveal. Like, guess yeah. what? Like, y'all thought I was sweet and naive, but I played y'all the, all along. And, you know, this is your chance, right? Right. Like, Even if you were a GOAT or you saw yourself as a GOAT, if you were a good... If you sign up to play, you have to be able to lie. Final Tribal is where you should lie the most. I would have said some fuck shit. Like, I had six idols, six fake idols hidden in my bag waiting for y'all. Didn't have to touch them. Even Courtney said, like, she's basically, she's like, I knew that I was a goat, but she's like, I knew that I wasn't going to win immunity. She's like, how else am I going to get here? She was like, I knew that that's what would get me here, and I played you all because you all believed it, and it got me here, and you're not, so. Yeah, you got to respect it. I was like, damn, bitch got a point, like, (laughs) you know? Yo, by the time, by the end of it, we were believing Karishma. I was like, you know what? Karishma can have my vote. By the end of it, we were hyping her. We were just like, you know what? You survived the apocalypse. You are a cockroach. You keep, you keep living. She has the most votes in all of Survivor. Maybe she deserves it now. I'm not sure. Like, I thought I hated her, but I think now I want to give her my money. (laughs) That was, that was a conversation. Karishma was a conversation to win the (laughs) game. one point believe it or not it's a legit it's legit it's a legit strategy yeah, yeah. all right i got Good time question. guys we got time for two more questions two more questions i'm gonna come at talent i got you all right so uh pg first of all survivor china was the first season i ever saw unironically so oh, nice in case you wanted to know that so thank you for being on there and keeping the journey going <laughs> and my question for you is if you had to make mount rushmore but with only survivors on it who would you choose I look, first of all, I like that you're holding up your uh, Sudoku book. Yeah, always grinding. <laughs> <laughs> always grinding. I love talent. <laughs> I, li- I like that. I like that. And also, I appreciate that China's like your gateway. Your gateway. No, it's kind of weird, survivor. but I like it. <laughs> um, the Mount Rushmore. Uh, well, shit. I guess I guess I have to put Sandra on there. If yeah. you're going to win twice, I feel like you, you deserve to be on there. Yeah. Um, I don't... <sighs> You know, because I really like players who are entertaining more than strategic. That's really kind of what I care more about. Um, so, like, I feel like I kind of want to. No, that's a good question. I haven't watched as much of it as you guys have. Um, that's okay. I, the characters are really like. I guess I do like Boston Rob as a character, mm-hmm. like just overall. Um, who else are the greats? Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like Parvati is pretty good. I feel like it's like a biased question. Who is your, who are you a fan of before you got to play? Well, so, I, so that's going way back. Um, but yeah. like, obviously I was a huge Stephanie LaGrosa fan. Yeah. Like, so this was, you know, cause that was before pre, pre whatever, 16, pre whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, she's who I really wanted to play like. I liked Rob, Rupert until I met him in person. Damn. <laughs> oh. Damn. Wow. I keep hearing that. Oh, I keep hearing it. What is he like in person? Is he I not the have, same? I just found him to be really patronizing. Mm. Like, I felt like he talked to me like I was 12 or something, and I didn't care for that, but that's maybe just my person. I don't know. Maybe I... Isn't, isn't Rupert the first player to win a million dollars and not have won the game? Because yep. he won the... So, yeah, I would think I was hot shit, and I bet people start believing the edit, right? If people hype you up, they probably start to act like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. One more question, right? Yeah, we got Jimmy. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. 
Eh, eh, last Sunday, eh, Survivor Second Chance started here in El Salvador. Oh, It's sweet. kind of crazy. <laughs> because, well, I watched the season like five years ago, but it's crazy to watch it again. And oh, it's air oh, it's it's airing there now. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. It Sorry. started last Sunday. Tomorrow, yeah. Chirring is gonna be voted out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I just want to mention that because to me, Second Chance is the is my favorite season. Actually, oh, okay. I bought the buff, Takeo buff. Nice. And you are one of my favorite players from China. Oh, and you. in 2007, China was the first season I watched in English. And yes. I, have, I have no idea what you were talking about, <laughs> but I enjoy it. I love that. Thank you, Jimmy. It's just I up. appreciate it was that. Great. It's just up. Yes. All right, guys, real quick before we sign out. Can we get the top five to put their emails in the chat for us? Um, include your Instagram handles for me, please, too. Um, and then if you did not make top five this week, you can always apply back. Check my Instagram page around Tuesday, Wednesday. I'll post a swipe up. We only accept 40 players. Every week, guys, we're getting more and more people to apply. So if you guys will play a couple of times, honestly, don't be surprised if next week you're not even, you're not even in the pool. We've gone from 40 people applying to 100, I think we're up in the 200s now. So it's just, it's wild, all right? So just keep applying. Happy to see old faces. Uh, I think that's it, yeah, Aaron? That's it. Yep, yep. good stuff, guys. This was so much fun. Thank you guys yes. for having me. Thank you so much to our celebrity host. We really appreciate <laughs> you for coming on. You killed the game. Uh, good job, Mackenzie, taking the podium right there with that last question, much like Stacy in weeks that's past. Yeah, how, so- how it I'm curious how much how many points do they usually give to um their the the, the guest host question and is usually pretty good i mean D if dean's feeling himself i can see him give it for 20 because it's dean but yeah <laughs> 10, 10 is typically the average you know oh good okay good 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 <laughs> yeah all right, all right y'all after you put your emails in the chat top five everybody else please sign out can i get all the hosts to stay all right bye y'all <laughs> bye justin bye, bye Charky, mackenzie jimmy Talon, Miguel, let's go. Bo, thank y'all. Yes. <laughs>